Hello, it's Nico with Food Cravings and today we're making the ultimate barbecued pork. If you've watched my video recipe on how to make barbecue sauce or competition barbecue sauce, you already know where barbecue comes from. But I did some more digging, so let's talk pork. Pork butt, or Boston butt as it's commonly referred to, is the American name for a cut of pork that comes from the upper part of the shoulder, from the front leg, and may contain the blade bone. Boston butt is the most common cut used for pulled pork, a staple of barbecue in the southern United States. In pre-revolutionary New England, and into the American Revolutionary War, New England butchers tended to take less prized cuts of pork like hams and shoulders and pack them into barrels for storage and transport known as the butt. It comes from the Latin word buttis, spelled B-U-T-T-I-S, meaning cask or barrel. This particular shoulder cut became known around the country as a Boston specialty and hence became known as the Boston butt. In the UK, it is known as pork hand and spring or simply pork hand. In Latin American Spanish, the cut is known as paleta de puerco and is the main ingredient in the Mexican dish carnitas and in the Caribbean dishes lechon asado and pernil. In Mexican Spanish, this cut is also known as the espadilla or little back. In Argentina, this cut is incredibly popular and is known as bondiola. In Korea, the cut is known as moksal, literally neck meat. Now that we've had our brief history lesson let's get started to begin what we'll do is start by bathing our pork with some vinegar water and lemon juice mixture this is the part where we really want to clean the meat thoroughly and ensure that the gamey scent is removed naturally I gave it a series of tosses and pats and twists and turns and flips throughout until everything was clean at which point in time I dumped the liquid and rinsed it next I began patting down the dry rub which consists of light and dark brown sugar and I made sure to pack it all around evenly before flipping it over to do the same. Shortly thereafter I started packing on the brown sugar until it was all evenly incorporated. And here's a pro tip, as you're patting down the mixture and distributing it all throughout the roast, it's important to remember to give it ample amount of seasoning since this is a really big cut of meat. And don't be afraid, if you give it less seasoning it just won't taste as good. And trust me, nobody wants meat that's under seasoned, especially that you already know we always build flavor bombs. But anyhow, enough about all the goodness. Next, we'll sprinkle on some kosher salt and gently massage that in all around. And here I was turning it over just after shortly massaging it on the top so that I can get an equal distribution of coarse salt on the bottom part. And once you have that in your hand like I had in mine, you'll want to go ahead and sprinkle it all over evenly before packing it in. Once that's evenly packed, you'll want to go ahead and massage that, that way everything will be incorporated more evenly on the top as on the bottom. And remember, you could go with any style rub that you'd like for this and by now you already know that when I'm on a quest for a drizzle, I already come back with something. This time it was honey and began slowly working it in, rubbing around all that sticky goodness on top, the sides and the bottom of the pork butt. Once that was all done, I looked around for what I was going to add next and you guessed it, it was my own secret blend of dry rub, especially custom tailored for pork. And here you already notice, I came in with a sprinkling of that on top of the fat cap evenly throughout. And I'll be sure to talk more about my spice blend on the blog post. But before I do that, I gotta rub this in real quick. And you'll wanna experiment with different spices and herbs. That way, you too can create your own custom dry rub for pork or any other delicious meat. But for classic southern style barbecue pork that's low and slow roasted goodness it's an entirely different story so now that we're done incorporating the dry rub mixture i'm gonna go ahead and get ready to hit it with some dark soy sauce for some added color of course we can't forget to massage that in evenly throughout 
all the while turning it to make sure the underside is also coated. Once that's to our desired shade of brown, we'll leave it a minute to soak up the soy sauce before flipping it over and drizzling in light soy. After gently yet vigorously incorporating that throughout, I shook the excess soy sauce off my hands. While realizing I needed something acidic to counterbalance all the sweetness, I dropped in the mustard before spreading that all around liberally. And for this I used a brown mustard, but you can use any kind of mustard you want. And here you'll notice I was taking the time to make sure that I incorporated the mustard all throughout even underneath the pork butt so that I left no crevice unturned until it was all evenly incorporated. Next, I placed that on an oven rack before placing it in a baking pan. But first, I took a bamboo skewer out and began poking through the fat cap, making sure not to poke through the meat. And what this will do is it'll bring this roast to a whole new level of dryness, making the skin extra crispy with all the fat rendered out through the newly created tiny pores before popping it in the center of a 250 degree oven for about 15 to 20 hours or until completely golden. And here you'll notice I've reached my goal of making what I call the best barbecue pork butt ever. I mean, look at it. All those layers from the shoulder are getting ready to pop off. And the fat is glistening. And the meat's juicy. And the bone's getting ready to come out. Oh my god. Well, you get the idea. By now, I'm sure you're also convinced that this is the best, if not the ultimate, barbecue pork recipe ever. I mean, this was barbecue of epic proportion. Slow roasted, which any pit master will tell you is the only way to go. And that's... Chef Nico style. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That's if you enjoy our video recipes. And after all that slow roasting, at this point, I was tempted to take it out of the oven and set it aside to rest, but I didn't. Although many of you might stop here, that's okay. I decided to push it for another few hours just to get the fat extra crispy. And I busted out with the cork mats and took it out of the oven. Our roast was finally done! Just the way I like it. The fat rendered and the top's deep molasses color. Finally, it was time for the fork test. Check it out! Next, I decided to go in for a taste. Did you really think I'd waste all that goodness? So I pulled the piece out and at first bite, the meat, moist, tender and juicy, imparted specific notes of caramelized brown sugar, spices and that molassesy goodness you get from the dark soy. Just look at that pink smoke ring around it and the juice is running clear. Yeah, so I went in for another taste. I mean, it was irresistible. I even got some burnt end bark. I mean, look how easily shredded this got. And the true test here is when you can pull the crispy skin back and see virtually all the fat melted away and all it's separating is between the meat and the skin. Doesn't that just look gorgeous? Here, let's take a closer look. I mean, surely there's no denying what a few long hours will do. It all turned a nice shade of mahogany. And I want to take some time to show you just how crunchy this was. See? And for my next trick, I'm going to show you just how tender this is. So much of the fat all around is rendered that the meat just pulls out between the skin. Let's cut another piece and see what happens. Man, it's gorgeous. And there are many applications for this cut of pork. If you're anything like me, slather some barbecue sauce over shredded portions of this for some pulled pork sandwiches. Speaking of which, I took out a fork, dumped some of the meat partially shredded into a bowl and went to town. For this part, I used my trusty fingers, the best tool in the kitchen, and begun plucking away at each piece until I had enough shredded pork to fill a sandwich. And I realized I had some of my barbecue sauce left over, so I took it, drizzled some in, and started giving that a mix. And no, I know what you're thinking. Those Wolverine claws from Amazon won't work. Having realized that, I just continued using my fork. Next, I busted out with my trusty magic roll, 
You know which ones I'm talking about. The ones that have meat appearing on them magically, specifically pulled pork. And it was time for another drizzle of what I call the best barbecue sauce or competition barbecue sauce ever. By now this delicious, juicy, smoky pulled pork sandwich was calling my name. So I went in for a taste. Moist, succulent, smoky, juicy, barbecue, slow roasted goodness. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed my recipe for the best barbecued pork ever. Whether you enjoy pulled pork sandwiches with my homemade barbecue sauce or carnitas tacos, for ingredient amounts and more info, please visit www.chefnico.blogspot.com Thank you, bon appetit, and enjoy!